The views and opinions expressed by the host and the guests of the Wild West Crypto Show are just that, views and opinions. We do not give financial advice. We highly recommend anyone considering entering into this very volatile market seek the advice of a financial advisor and never risk more than you would risk on a roll of dice in Vegas. The Wild West Crypto Show is designed to entertain and inform our audiences. Thank you for tuning in. I've got no remorse. My nest egg looking pretty. Brent and Drew the boy Showed the world immutability Jack and Hash is on the blockchain Try not to be caught The world says Short the banks Buy your Bitcoin Howdy Hit folks, welcome to the Wild West Crypto Show I'm Drew and this is a special edition We are coming to you from Vegas We are at the Metaverse Conference And there is a bunch of stuff going on here in Vegas Vegas is Vegas, baby And what happens in Vegas Ends up on YouTube and all over the internet so you don't want to be caught in that part of it. Folks, let me tell you something. We're going to be interviewing some really incredible people that are doing a whole lot of different things in the cryptocurrency and blockchain space that are touching what everyone does. Morris Callahan, we'll interview him. And they are actually doing the first series. I've already got three of them in the can. They are amazing, top quality uh, production, which, you know, with all the change in Hollywood and the decentralization of making movies and all that, it's incredible. But they are doing The Count of Monte Cristo, and it's a remake, but it's gambling and vague, casino-ish, Vegas-esque. It's really awesome. And the beauty of it is people can go in, and if you like it, you can support it and participate as an investor in movies and television. They are pioneering the ground doing this. And then we've got Chris Champion from uh, the Crypto Dinners, which is what we we were invited to come out and cover this and do things with a lot of different people for this. And Chris is a real superstar in the space, been doing this for a long time, very, very well connected. And uh, so anyway, we will be working with him more and more as you've seen in the last couple of weeks where we bring him in once a week to tell us what he's doing. So we're really wanting to outreach more into the community. And now that it's maturing, we want to be the people that are at the forefront of this and be the voice and tell the stories of what's really going on. So very, very exciting times. You're going to want to watch this whole episode. It's a little bit of a departure from our normal episodes, but I think you're going to like it. So stay tuned and hope you enjoy. Please let us know. Drew with Wild West Crypto Show. Stay tuned. Got more to come. Imagine a streaming platform with compelling content uncensored. Discover Flix at Flix.net. News, financial, opinion, lifestyle, and music. Flix, telling it like it is. Watch Flix now at Flix.net. Available on Roku and Amazon Fire and coming soon to Apple TV. Howdy folks, welcome to the Wild West Crypto Show. I'm Drew and I'm coming to you from Las Vegas at Metaverse 2022. And I have with me literally the man of the hour, actually the man of the weekend for us. Um, I've got Mr. Chris Champion here with me. Chris, uh, you and I met four, five years ago, four or five. I sent you a picture I found the, the other day. I know, man, I was shocked, yeah. And uh, anyway, and and then re reacquainted when in we were Austin. At, uh, in Austin and have, uh, as a couple of OGs in the space, you've been doing all kinds of incredible stuff. We've been growing and building in the things that we're doing and all that. And so we just decided, you know what, this industry, which less than a 4% adoption globally, this industry needs people that are the OGs and the icons and the people that are really making the difference in the space. Kind of join forces in some of the things that we're doing and really get out there and reach everybody that we can because this is the future, right? So, Chris, I, I want you to talk a, a little bit about not only Metaverse 2022, the things that you're doing and things that are coming up. Because when we get people on, uh, get on people's radar and they put this on their schedule, it can change their life. Oh, yeah. And yeah. the connections you make over food are better than any connection you can ever make. Yeah. Like you can go to a conference and you can see somebody talk on stage. But well, most of the people that are sitting in the audience, they're sitting on their phone, tweeting, twitching, Facebook and Instagramming. And, and I think when you have food in front of you, yeah, it forces you to listen to the other person talk. It forces you to make real connections. You bet. So we're here in Vegas at Metaverse 2022 to kick off dinner. You had a chance just now to talk to Alex. Yes. 
They poured over $2 million into the event. They've got a stage. You're com coming on stage talking on Saturday yes. on a panel for an hour. We're going to talk about the intersection of DAOs and Hollywood. And Hollywood has basically been controlled by the studios. The studios have poured money into Hollywood, but they have made and printed money out of that industry left and right. You bet. I mean, you don't think that these actors are getting paid $20 million a movie because the studio is not making $100 million, right? Right. Yeah. So we're now going to see real Hollywood production films and series that are going to be given to the everyday man on the globe. Like anywhere in the globe, people are going to be able to buy into a DAO that owns 51% of the digital rights to a film, and they get royalties on that film into perpetuity. You bet. That's right. I said it. Perpetuity. Try that one a few times. <laughs> Absolutely. So I think that that's going to be a big change. In Miami in a week, we're actually going to be on a 160-foot, three-level yacht. We're going to party at the dock for about two hours, four hours. Then we're going to party on the water for three hours. Then we're going to come back. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay on the yacht. Yeah, yeah. But you are sitting here in an environment for the seven hours, and you're exactly right. Been to a bunch of these conferences, back to back to back. You want to go listen to this person, listen to that person. You really get very little, make very few contacts out of it. But when you spend seven hours on a yacht with people, you're going to go out there. You're going to know most of the people on the yacht because there's not 25,000 of them that go to a conference. It's a smaller group of some of the sharpest folks in the industry. So somebody put it in good perspective for me. They went to NFT week in Miami, which was a great event, but they made four connections, high level connections out of my dinner. He's like, I didn't make four connections at the entire conference for three days. Yeah. I sweat my ass off and went to the bathroom, but I didn't make four good connections. Right. It's like one lady, I know about her kids. I know where she lives. I know about her dog. I saw pictures of them and we're going to do business together because I made a real connection with a real person. You bet. Folks, that is why when Chris and I reconnected a month ago, we got to talk and we said, listen. We, let's work on this together with the assets that we have, the media and other things. And I mean, his ability, I, I, I have to tell you, <laughs> you know, I, big kudos to you. I know a lot of people in this space. You reach people I can't reach, you know? And so uh, that's where uh, collectively, we will really be able to make a big impact on the space. They're all hungry, man. They're they all have, hungry and thirsty. No question. Right? Yeah. yeah. Just They're going to take time to eat dinner and have a cocktail. Listen, yeah. you can feed homeless people or you can feed crypto people, but they both got to eat. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And not only that, but you, you, so you have Miami next week and we will be there. Okay. And then beyond that, from the time I met you and you'd done half a dozen dinners, mm -hmm. then when I ran into you in, in Austin again, 138 under your belt would be 138. Was in New York. Yeah. And then now September 1st, we're doing the kickoff dinner in Nashville. I know. Can't and by the way, part of that. Nashville should be a lot of fun. There's so much going on down there. Really? And so it's, the, it's an NFT conference. And I think music and NFTs are going to do a lot. You're yeah. going to see a lot happening in that space between the two. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, Chris, I mean, it's, it's always a, it's, it's a blast to always see you. You're, I have a, a ball with you. You know, part of it is Chris is a real straight shooter. No bullshit guy. He'll have a laugh here and there. And, but I have to tell you, you're about the business. So let's get things done. Let's make a difference. Well, I'm actually excited that you're here in Vegas because I've heard you're going to tear apart the blackjack table over here. I, I, I tend to get a little when we get done with this best time for me to I told you I'm an early bird. But when I'm in Vegas, I, I'll hit blackjack a little bit. I'm a craps guy. You're a craps so, guy? Oh, yes, sir. We may have to go see the craps table. I'm telling you, buddy. We're There's nothing like hard eights and hard sixes. I know it, man. That's it. That's My it. Favorite, favorite roll in the dice. It is, man. It is. Yeah. All right, Chris, really appreciate you allowing me to come here, us do this, and the things that we're going to do together will really change this. It's industry. all about telling stories and educating people. It is, man. It is. Appreciate you, buddy. Oh, brother. All Love right. You, man. Folks, Wild West Crypto Show. We'll be back with more. Howdy folks, my name is Jonathan Kine. Here at Cryptocurrency Wire, we cover the latest news in the blockchain market while also helping innovators in the space reach large audiences in the mainstream, particularly those interested in finance. Cryptocurrency Wire is just one of 50 plus brands part of the Investor Brand Network, a platform that we've been developing for more than 15 years now. Collectively, these 50 plus brands have more than 2 million social media likes and followers. And when one of our clients or event partners has news, we offer direct reach to these audiences, as well as article syndication to thousands of news outlets such as Apple News and MarketWatch. 
If you want to reach new audiences with your next big announcement or need a multifaceted communications plan that incorporates original content creation, visit us online at CryptocurrencyWire.com. You can also get the latest news by following us on Twitter at CryptoNetWire. Howdy folks, welcome to the Wild West Crypto Show, and we are in Vegas, and I would say that it's Meta Week, but when you're in Vegas, it's a week for everything. I'm, I'm Drew Taylor, and I have with me Mr. Morris Callahan. Morris, how are you doing? I'm well. well. I'm well, Drew. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Folks, I have to tell you, so Morris and I have talked a couple of times before, and I, I come in, and when he comes walking up, I mean, I mean I'm going to guess this six foot four, six foot six big dude. You don't have big people on television. It's like the old fighter pilots, you know, they wouldn't fit in the airplane. So he comes walking up and he looks at me and I thought, damn, that's Mars Callahan in, in someone else's body, you know? And anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, there's a lot of Apple boxes used in the in movie magic and, and, and film and television. Yeah. So speaking of film and television, which you're a seasoned, you know, you've been on both sides of this thing yes. and you are working on something that in the crypto blockchain space is really, a, a, you're trailblazing. Well, it's exciting. I think it's the, it's, everything is the wild, wild west. It's the new frontier right now. You know, yeah. um, people are trying to figure out how in a rapidly evolving and changing world we can keep up with technological advancements, economic uh, changes and evolutions uh, globally. And uh, when I looked at cryptocurrency and blockchain technology, um, learning about a DAO and what a DAO enables um, people to do from all over the world and participate in projects from all over the ends of the earth. Um, we created the very first Hollywood television series that's backed by a DAO, giving the average uh, person from anywhere from Australia to France to Africa, to India, anywhere in the world, the ability to, to um, participate in um, the television series Economic uh, Upside yeah. and the behind the scenes red carpet Hollywood experience. So yeah. it's really the best of both worlds and and people can get involved in a, a little bit or a lot. And um, and it's really exciting. Well, well you know, and, and I'll tell you, Mars, when I first started following uh, Bitcoin and blockchain analysts in 2013, and to me, it was a it, it was a largely uncharted Waters didn't know where it was going to go, but it was intriguing enough. Technology was there, and I thought it was the future of money, and, I, and it's proving itself. But the thing that got me more excited than that is it's really democratizing and decentralizing how so many things are done. And to your point, the people that have made movies since Hollywood came out, it's this circle. It's a, it's a I won't say good old boys club, but it's a Hollywood club. And outsiders, it's tough for an outsider to try to get in and, and participate in that. And so by democratizing the way that these things are funded, it gives everybody an opportunity. And with this, you know, the Count of Monte Cristo, the way that y'all are redoing this thing, yeah. and you're doing it through this DAO, all of a sudden you have the fans that own it. And what are they going to do? If you own part of something, you're the biggest fan. It's amazing. We're building a community. Yes. Um, with a built-in fan base that are actually owners of the property themselves right um completely decentralized and what's amazing about uh blockchain technology is smart contracts for the first time in hollywood history you don't get any hollywood shenanigans when it comes to the accounting when a dollar comes in it gets swifted out to the investors it gets swifted out to the director the writers the talent that's actually working hard to make the project successful and there's no hollywood creative accounting or cross collateralization of books you can go to sleep at night you can wake up and you like on YouTube when you see how many views it got. Yeah. You got a hundred thousand views last night, you know exactly how much money you made. Yeah. And it's sitting there right in your account. You don't have to wait and hope that you get a fair shake. This is again decentralized, democratized, and uh and truly ethical for the first time ever, really. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head. There's there's a couple other things to it. So obviously this is out. Give us a timeline on that, because I know you have three in the can of which I watched all of the first one about half of the yeah. <laughs> So um, the Count uh, is a modern day retelling of the Count of Monte Cristo. Right. Uh, set in a global Scorsese-esque casino gangstery backdrop, global gaming empire. Um, we had set out to go make the first three episodes, I mean, well, the first season, 10 episodes. Uh, it's a 10 episode season. We made the first three and then the pandemic hit. 
So we had to sit on our hands while nobody was in production. Nobody could make anything. And now we're in a position where we're going to go make episodes four through ten, finish off season one. And so the proof is in the pudding. You guys can come and take a look and see the first three episodes and kick the tires and see if it's something that you want to participate in. Everybody's real happy with the, uh, the product so far. The first three episodes are absolutely fantastic. And we're doing a count DAO. And um, what's, what's the, what was it? The count DAO.com? What what's the name of the, the count DAO.com? What is it? Yes. What's the name? Yeah, the countdow.com. Yes. I was correct. D D A O countdow D A O dot com. Yeah. Is it the yeah. count or is it just count? The count D A O dot com, and you can not D O W D A O right. Yeah. So we um, so if you go to the countdow dot com, you'll be able to um, uh, get involved early, and uh, and it's gonna it, it's gonna fill up quick. So. You're going to want to get involved as quickly as possible. You, you, you will. And folks, it's really, it's changing the way. If you look over the last few years, there's been a lot of stuff put out. Everybody's trying to do original content. There's so many streaming platforms. Everybody's wanting to compete against each other with these different things. And they're producing things with, really without a whole lot of consideration of what the people want. So when the people can invest in something because they like what it is, the support that they'll get, it's a fan owned, I mean, that's the bottom line is it? it's a fan owned production that you can go and support and help make successful and then profit from it. I mean, it's a- It's kind of like the Green Bay Packers. You know? It is. It, it's owned by the city, by the fans, by the, by the season ticket holders yes. own a piece of the team. So it's like, it's, uh, it's really exciting to see this. It's a very, very, it's the first time it's ever been done. And, uh, and we hope that not only are we trailblazing, but that we set up a system where this can be done for other projects in the future. You, you bet, absolutely. I mean, congratulations. What a, yeah, anytime you go do anything for the first time, and I, I'm, I have to tell you, I've said for a long, long time, being an inventor, you are as well. Something worth doing is worth doing badly at first, you know, because you got to prove it. But I have to tell you, I'm sitting there watching these episodes. They're not, it's, it is as quality of production as you can get. Well, I always say, look, if, if if you watch the first three episodes of the count and you don't think that it's in that the quality of the first three episodes are in the top 10 percent of anything that's being made in hollywood today then you don't have to participate in the doubt yeah yeah but if you do like but if it is in the top 10 percent uh and you see the quality then you should get in quick because as i said it's it's going to be one of those things where you know when we do actually launch the DAO on yeah. September 1st, you know, it could be one of those things that sells out in a day. You, you know bet. what I mean? Yeah. Like, so. Yeah. Very exciting. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you very that. much. And, and thanks again for and, having me. I appreciate it. I look forward to following it, getting involved with it, and then see what we do beyond this. Thank you, you know? sir. Yes, appreciate absolutely. It. All right. Folks, let me tell you something. Much more to come. There's amazing things going on, and you don't want to miss any of it. The automotive industry has always evolved to meet technological change. But today, we are experiencing a revolutionary paradigm shift. Exponential innovation is quickly reimagining the future of the industry. And at Carnomaly, we are pioneering the solutions to meet its rapid trajectory. Our fleet of digital services harness the power of blockchain technology to create the new industry standard for accurate, transparent car buying. It includes car chain, a comprehensive blockchain database that maintains a historical digital profile for each vehicle. Cardify, a decentralized auto financing solution that offers peer-to-peer -peer lending using the unlimited value of cryptocurrency. And Carnomaly, a new digital platform for both buyers, sellers, and dealers that recreates the outdated, ineffective auto trading process. Discover how Carnomaly is leading innovation in the new age of automotive through these solutions and more. Discover Carnomaly.
Howdy folks, welcome back to the Wild West Crypto Show. I'm Drew, we are coming to you from Vegas, where the big metaverse conference is going on. And I have to tell you folks, there is a buzz, things are happening, you wanna be part of it. And I am sitting here with Mr. Alex Wachneen. Alex, how are you doing? Very good, thank you for having me. Absolutely, I appreciate you coming on, spend a little bit of time with us. So pleasure. tell me, what the heck are you doing? <laughs> well, uh, it's, this is a crazy story. Uh, my wife and I founded the Jigsaw Puzzle International Convention. And uh, curiously, it's something that had never happened in the history of the world. Really? And yeah, that kind of shocked us. And, uh, you know, we just came out of the pandemic. There was a tremendous growth in the Jigsaw Puzzle industry of an 883% growth over two years. I can believe it. People sitting at home. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Puzzling. Uh, People of all ages, all walks of life love puzzling, so that was great. And I get introduced to Dave Evans, the CEO of TCG World. Okay. So I get offered to enter the metaverse and to bring and develop Jigsaw Puzzle 3D immersive games in the TCG metaverse. Because I have a 25 year career in IT. Okay. Uh, so I'm a CTO yeah. by nature. <laughs> Well, I was in software development, gaming, etc. I gaming because I'm in Malta, so all the online casinos are in Malta. Okay, yeah, I was into this, and an entrepreneur all my life as well. So Dave Evans tells me, "Okay, uh, what's the deal?" And he says, "Like, there, there's no jigsaw puzzle games in the metaverse at all," mm -hmm. and he's always looking for new and different businesses instead of bringing always, you know, first shooter games and the same repetitive sure. stuff. And I said, all right, great. Uh, I can step in, we can develop gains. I can get the VCs to fund this, no problem. And I go to him, well, look, I'm doing the first ever convention in Las Vegas, Nevada, and at the Las Vegas Convention Center. And I said, why don't you do a joint with me? Have you ever done a convention? And he's like, no, because TCG is like just over a year old. And on the fly, he said, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> there you go. When it that fits, simple. it fits. And, and, and then it just flowed like water. A uh, great partnership with him. He's an amazing guy, uh, very supportive. So it, it came down to this crazy thing of the Jigsaw Puzzle International Convention X Metaverse Expo 2022 presented by TCG World. So we ended up renting the uh, South Hall of the Las Vegas Convention Center, 229,000 square feet. Yeah. Divided in two right down the middle, one half Jigsaw Puzzle, the other half Metaverse. And I think it's, uh, you, you just got to see the show floor. It's going to be absolutely incredible. I, I tell you, I can't wait to get over there. Uh, uh, you know, Chris invited us to come do this, and I'm working with Chris, known him for several years in space. Yeah. And uh, I think we're going to be on a panel over there Saturday morning, matter of fact, so I'm looking forward to that. So, so let me ask you, so relatively new to the crypto space, blockchain space and all that, mm -hmm. and you're getting immersed in it, trial by fire, <laughs> right, immersion, right? Um, it, 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 tell me how... I mean, are you, it's crazy to a lot of people that don't understand it, but you're a tech guy. It's so obviously it makes perfect sense to you, right? And and it's, for me as an old guy who's been, a, you know, the old typical guy, especially being from Texas, an old farm boy, the excitement of this is like getting on the rocket in the 60s. I remember watching, I'm an old man. I remember watching on the news when they're talking about sending a rocket up into space and they're doing things they're doing, going to land on the moon. Mm -hmm. To me, this feels like that times a million. Well, um, the metaverse is like everything new that has appeared in the past, like the internet when we thought it was a fad and it wouldn't last in the 90s. And um, everything that falls into this category, which means everything new, everything re revolutionary that's going to change the world, literally. Right you have to go through an educational process. You bet. And the Metaverse Expo is exactly that because we have 35 very high quality speakers lined up and that's what they're going to do. They're going to educate the public. So we're not gonna do like crypto conferences where they talk at a very high technical level. So this the is... layperson still can't get a clue. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and the TCG metaverse is really different because it's the only metaverse where every single item in that metaverse, which is obviously an NFT, is actually usable. Anything you find or collect, you can use it, resell it with TCG coin. And you can, for example, own a dragon and literally get on its back and fly through the whole metaverse on it. 
or you can get in a car and drive the car, which is not even possible. I don't want to blast the competition, but in other metaverses for now, yeah. they're months behind in the yeah. development. Yeah. So that's what's absolutely amazing. Uh, so the educational process to the public, it's an introduction so they can understand what's the metaverse and discover virtual reality and and the comparison, you know, and the difference with augmented reality. And then for companies, it's the opportunity for them to discover how they can enter the metaverse. You bet. And how it's going to change the face of business for the years to come. You, you, you know, Alex, and, and this resonates. I've been doing the Wild West Crypto Show for five years. I have a set that is actually, it's, it's not a green screen. It is really stuff that we just pulled out of our barns and, and everything else. But one of the things I've been talking about, Wild West Crypto Show needs to coexist in the metaverse as well. We need our own room, our own whatever it is. Maybe the wild building. West. It is right. Your lot in your building. Yes, exactly. And and companies, they don't really understand it, but they're coming to me all the time, going, "How do I do this? How do I do this?" And I'm sitting there telling them, "To be honest with you, I'm working on figuring that. I'm navigating those waters as we speak. Yep. But I'm telling you, the people that don't do it will miss the curve, and we'll see them go away. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm just telling you, if hey, businesses that are not on the internet today very few of them survive. You have to have an internet presence. Same thing is gonna be true over the next few years in the metaverse. If you do not have a presence in the metaverse, you're gonna get left behind, left at the train station. Do you agree with that? Absolutely, and let's take a concrete example. You bet. Suppose that you're a lawyer, because a lawyer could say, what am I gonna do in the metaverse? Yeah. It's not for me, wrong, it is for you. Because you're in the metaverse and you have potentially, eventually billions of people that are gonna be in there. You're gonna be the way to go. It's the natural evolution of the PC or the gaming console to the new way of doing things with technology. And so as a lawyer, you're going to have all sorts of people in there that are going to, they're going to have, you know, a need for legal consultation or assistance. They find you or your law firm and you're building in the metaverse. They come to consult you. You might be in the state of Texas and they might be in Washington state or Georgia or Utah or whatever. And they're going to talk to you. You just made a new client that would have been totally out of your reach in any other circumstance. Yeah. Because uh, there's a lot of lawyers. Some of them have a hard time making a living because they always try to get clientele in their local community. So once they get around the people they know, they've reached the limits of how they can expand their business and how sure. it could grow. The metaverse puts no limit on how much you can grow your business and how far you can go. Yeah, and that's, it, it, again, it, it's it, it's case in point for the things that are that that is the future. Okay, and I love the I love the case about the, the attorneys or whatever it happens to be. Those that are forward thinking enough to have that presence, they will be the few that get selected from the people that do understand it and are aggressively pursuing that. You know, it, it's it's fascinating to me. It's going to open also new venues. It's going to create business where none existed before, like legal case, cases within the metaverse, a dispute between two people over a plot of land ownership or an NFT ownership or an agreement in a, in a smart contract that was not respected. We're opening a new world. And I think that like the legal system, like the monetary system, is not even ready to handle this kind of thing. Oh, yeah, right yeah. No, you're exactly right. And, and let me tell you, what Zoom has done for business, which is good, there's nothing like sitting here person to person. Yeah. Secondary, which is really tertiary to that, is doing a Zoom, but it still doesn't encompass it all. The metaverse with AI and everything else, it is you and I sitting here at this table and we could be anywhere else on the planet. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's really fascinating. Well, congratulations. I can't wait to get over to the conference and Thank walk that much. floor and see everything that's going on. It's just amazing. Looking forward to have you over with your crew everybody please come and visit come and support us this is a success this will be a great success it's going to be an annual recurring event yeah and we will awesome. come back to vegas and absolutely everywhere in the world thank you so much real pleasure sir thank you, you folks i'm telling you crazy stuff going on you gotta learn about it so stay tuned we got more coming take care Imagine a streaming platform with compelling content uncensored.
Discover Flix at flix.net. News, financial, opinion, lifestyle, and music. Flix, telling it like it is. Watch Flix now at flix.net. Available on Roku and Amazon Fire and coming soon to Apple TV. Howdy, folks. Welcome back to the Wild West Crypto Show. I'm Drew, and I'm with Ryan Kirkley. And Ryan is out here. We're at this Metaverse conference. Uh, Chris Champion was kind enough to kind of get us all together. Wild things are going on. Ryan, how are you doing? Doing great. Happy to be here in Vegas and uh, looking forward to the conference. It's going to be a lot of fun. Absolutely. So, Ryan, what in the hell are you up to, man? Yeah, so so we got a lot going on our side. Uh, we run uh, one, one of uh, Web3 accelerators, basically. Okay. Uh, so we have metaverse devs, marketing, and then fundraising, uh, kind of full service for any kind of project. On, on the top of that, we also run a tech company doing NFT ticketing. And so we're really kind of approaching this from all angles and getting more people into the Web3 ecosystem and crypto ecosystem. Absolutely. So, you know, and folks, for those of you that have watched our show, you kind of know we look at Web3 is all the rage. I mean, it's generational stuff in the things that you're doing in this in the metaverse. And I have to tell you, I'm an old man, right? So yeah, I couldn't understand the Internet when it first came out, you know, and, and, and until I saw that you could, you know, find discounts on stuff and then i really gotta no but but doing the things that you're doing you're dancing in the space this is the future we this has been getting established one of the things that i really like about um the evolution over the last two or three years is we see the market maturing into things okay so with the applications you've got and i didn't even understand this till a couple of months ago the solutions that web3 because they've been talking about it for a couple years the solution that they create a bunch of it deals with you keeping your own data right Bingo. Privacy without the risk that cryptocurrency has done the 42 characters, the you know eight seed phrase or whatever it is. Web 3.0 is curing a lot of that for people in the metaverse. The things that you're doing, I, it, you know, Ryan, and you're a young guy, right? Yeah. For me, video games were were Atari and you know Zelda and that kind of thing. Bobby, our videographer, he comes in occasionally, he'll bring in his glasses and goggles and get me into places that have me almost falling over and, <laughs> you know, getting worn out on all that stuff. You, the integration of the things that you guys are doing, metaverse is not, it isn't a buzzword and it's not humorous. It's it's real world. It's the it's the real future. So, so I look at it as I, I, gr- I grew up, fortunately, in, in still the Zelda era, right? That was when I was young getting into video games and I saw the evolution occur, right? We started going into things like RuneScape and World of Warcraft. Yes. And quite honestly, those were the first metaverses yes. for functional purposes. Like they had currencies you could buy with real world USD and convert into there. And people would spend tens of hundreds of thousands of dollars. And so now what we're seeing, though, is how does that start to play out with, say, celebrities and how they interact? Mm-hmm. How does it go for sports? How does it go for the real world of social interaction, things like that? So now say I'm Prada. Well, I want to be in the metaverse. Now I want to know what you're doing in the metaverse. So I'm going to give you some of my Prada tokens. So I'm actually going to pay you to know more about you as the user rather than just using these cookies that the internet has today right. that steal all your data. Right. And so that, I mean, that's actually where I came from was big data. I worked on political campaigns all over the country, okay. tracking people there. And then I went and worked with refugees, tracking them moving across borders. Okay. okay. I know how creepy things are. And so that's what's so cool to me about Web3 is it stops this. Yes. It gets us away from it. Now, the metaverse is part of Web3. Where I'm most excited about, though, is the idea that you can actually start to control all aspects down to the individual level. So, for example, like the ticketing project we're working on, really excited because the idea that you can get rid of all scammers, all yes. scalpers, yes. all anything, that artists can now own the secondary market so they can get 11, 10 percent of every ticket sale afterwards. And you can make sure your actual fans are the one there, not just the highest bidder from an automated bot going out. Yeah, that's a game changer in that industry. But that will introduce everybody to wallets, to cryptocurrency, right, things right. like that. And then you're able to do that game changing performance across currencies, across how you purchase, across how you interact on the Internet. And really, we're going to change how society operates rather overnight. But beyond that, let me tell you something. In the voting system, when we're using NFTs for voting, car titles, home deeds and all this, people's houses are being stolen today. They're running ads about it because people will go in there and they can file a tax lien on this thing. Circumvent system won't be able to do it with the future that you're helping to build. Uh, absolutely. I mean, and there, there's there's some really cool things with high end goods being sold. And, and that's uh, one of the coolest projects we're working on is actually a Van Gogh. 
Okay. And we're yes. looking at yeah. being able to fractionalize that yes. item and sell it as NFTs. And then they own a part of a Van Gogh. Yeah. And it can just really change the way investors work. Uh, a big part of investing is these accredited investors. It's how sure. rich stay rich. Right. But NFTs, tokenomics, it allows people like you and me to go in and get in the early stages of projects and companies and actually start to flip the script economically. And so that's where I think I'm most excited ultimately yeah. is we're going to we're going to make it where the American dream is back to a reality for the entire world. Though. That's exactly right. You know, it's funny you saying that when I got into this space, it is what I am. We will see blockchain, cryptocurrency, Web3, metaverse and all. It will raise more people, the life, the standard of living globally than anything ever has. And what's interesting is there's still 3.2 billion people that are unbanked, yet 6 billion of the 7 billion people have a cell phone. So now with a cell phone, it is a bank. You can get an identification and everything else. This brings people into the real world economy. So some of the coolest projects that we're more volunteering on is are these impact projects, just like you said. So one of them is really cool. It's its banking system and cryptocurrency for Africa. Now, people who don't know, Africa has massive corruption. Yeah. Just to exchange inflation doesn't like, sorry, exchange currency doesn't work. You can't do it without paying a 20, 30 percent fee often in between the governments. These people are living on two, three dollars a day. Yeah, that is that is the difference between them feeding a child, sure, and that child going hungry. Yeah, and so now we have this where we're able to go and in real time put this to a stable coin or even tie it back to the U.S. dollar through this cryptocurrency. Yeah, and they know that it's staked and stable, and that then they're able to interact with this through their mobile phones. It also gets kind of cool because you know Elon Musk, whether you love or hate the guy, yeah, his Starlink satellites have completely changed this because we can get around all of the blockers. We yeah. can get around all of the bad actors, governments that want to interfere and just say, no, we're empowering the people. You bet. And yeah. so that's what's so cool is like, it's going to lead this revolution of democracy around the world and capitalism around the world yeah. that should just continuously lift people up from abject poverty and corruption. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, the, it, I'm glad to see you this excited about it because folks, the evolution, the industrial revolution really changed the world and the U.S. was in the forefront of that. Now you have all these other things and yeah, the internet has done some things and I mean, there's been huge impact as a result of it. The ride that we are on today will literally change the world, the people that live in it, their access to almost everything to a higher standard through peer-to-peer -peer decentralization without the corruption forever. So, I, mean, I, mean, I, think, I think that's what's so exciting about it and that's why I, like, I, I often am very critical of some of these big NFT projects and a lot of the coins that just pop up to get rich because it gives a really bad name to the tech. Sure. This tech will change the world. Yeah. And that's what we should be talking about is what is 10 years from now this tech look like? Yeah. Not what is the next year or two of it, but let's look bigger. Let's look to a bigger impact and talk about that because I think when you go to that 10 year, no one can be critical of what this tech can do once yeah. we develop it. But yeah, they can be real critical about what Bitcoin's going to do in the next two months. Yeah. And so that's where, to me, it's like, let's step back a little. This is a 10 year growth, much like e-commerce, right? 92, 93, we had all these analysts say the Internet's a fad. It's dead. Yeah, we all knew that was wrong then. And yeah. We still know it's wrong now. Yeah. It's going to be here. It's going to only grow. And that's what we just need to keep focusing on is is the benefits and the good. And weed out the bad, which is, I think, why I'm. I'm cautiously optimistic about this downturn. I think yeah. it's getting rid of the bad projects. I agree completely. And allowing us to rise up with the with the people who are building real change in the system. No question. You, you, you know, folks, and, and I'm going to go back to a couple of things he said. The re, Do you know why wealthy people buy art? It isn't because they necessarily think of Picasso as real pretty, okay? Because otherwise you'd never buy a Picasso. They buy it because it appreciates. It appreciates higher than the standard and pours. It appreciates higher than the stock markets and everything else. They buy it, but could you afford to buy a Picasso? Today, you can afford to buy $5 worth of that Van Gogh. And if you're in Africa, you can ride the appreciation of that artwork. That's where it makes it a game changer for the globe. Well, and, and I'll even do you one better. Uh, both Europe and the US and Canada have some really interesting art tax laws. Why do they buy it right away? Because they can write off 30% of that against their taxes. You know, but you have to buy artwork that's considered a collectible that hits a certain threshold. Most people can't afford to do that. Right. And so this allows people to also start to be able to keep more of their money. Because realistically, when you talk about it, yeah, the middle class pays the biggest proportional share of taxes compared to anyone in this country right. and in Europe. Why is that? It's because they don't have the money to get around it. And so that's the other cool thing about this is a lot of this stuff is going to allow us to start to change how that how that purchase pattern works, how tax law works. And we're really going to be challenging the government to catch up to us. Yeah. One of my favorite things we're working on right now is we're working on a big yacht sale. Now, 
we know for a fact the government's going to come strong after us. Yeah. Because the way it's codified right now, NFTs are collectibles. If you lease that yacht for 100 years, cool. Yeah, yeah. But then they're able to write off the depreciation as the company of the yacht. Yeah. And the owner's allowed to write off the NFT as artwork. Yeah. And there's no taxes paid. We know things like that are going to happen and be done in the space in the next two years. Yeah, yeah. Do I think the government's going to be able to pass laws to catch up to it that fast? Not at all. <laughs> yeah, they won't. And yeah. so I do think that we're going to challenge the entire financial system for the better. Yeah. And really have to rewrite our tax code to a much simpler, yeah. more cohesive message around the globe because yeah. this it removes the power of the government. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I tell you what, Ryan, congratulations on this. Love to see passion, young folks. I'm, look, I'm, I'm old guard in this when, when I ran back into to Chris couple of weeks ago or a month or so ago in Austin, because I met him four or five years ago, I hadn't seen each other since. And we're, we're sitting there talking, going, all right, we're still doing this game. So there are going to be some of the old farts that are hanging around in it. But man, I'm, it's delightful to work with a bunch of young folks that, that are changing the world. Man. Absolutely. I love everyone in the space and it's so exciting to see where we're going. You bet. You bet. Thank you so much for your time today. Please keep us posted. And, and when you want to come on anytime. So we do a daily update every day with my show and we do special features in that thing. So if you ever have any, even literally we do that thing every day at three thirty central time. Yeah. If you have something you want to share and you want to get on there and broadcast to the folks for 10 minutes, hit us up and we'll bring you on. Awesome. I okay? certainly appreciate that. You got it. You got it. All buddy. right. Thanks so much. Congratulations.